Leading Education Towards Successful Teaching and Lasting Knowledge, or Let's Talk, is a podcast that discusses relevant topics and issues in education management and governance. Hosted by Dr. Evely Serrano, Dr. Monica Wallet, and Dr. Emily Dicolen, Let's Talk is an extension initiative of the Institute for Governance and Rural Development, College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Las Banas. Dr. Evely is an associate professor and the director of IGRDC Path. An education enthusiast and lifelong learner, she is passionate about improving the quality of teaching and learning through teacher training and education. An assistant professor at IGRDC Path, Dr. Monica has occupied academic and leadership positions in higher education institutions in the Philippines and Singapore. A registered psychologist, She is a well-known mental health advocate and speaker who designs and facilitates training programs aimed at promoting mental health and well-being. Dr. Emily is an associate professor and currently the college secretary of UP Manila's National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions. A dynamic administrator and education manager, she has introduced innovative programs and projects in various institutions of higher learning. Let's talk! Every Wednesday on the UPLB College of Public Affairs and Development Facebook page as we lead education towards successful teaching and lasting knowledge. Hello everyone! Welcome to Let's Talk, leading education towards successful teaching and lasting knowledge. Let's Talk is a public service initiative of the Institute for Governance and Rural Development, College of Public Affairs and Development, UPLD. In this podcast, we'll be talking about relevant issues in education management and governance. We'll be streaming Wednesdays on the UPLD CPAP Facebook page. I am Evidy Serrano, Associate Professor and Director of IGRD CPAP. Joining me in this podcast are Dr. Monica Wallet, and Dr. Emily Dicolin. Hi, this is Monica, Assistant Professor of CIPA, UPLB. Hey everyone, this is Emily Dicolin. I am an Associate Professor of the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions, UP Manila, and of course, an Affiliate Professor of CIPA, UPLB. And in our podcast, we prepared several episodes and interesting topics for you. Today, we'll be talking about readiness for blended learning, and then we'll be talking about perceived impact of remote learning in our next episode, then learning loss or unfinished learning, and of course, challenges in teaching and learning and interventions to address these challenges. And our last episode is going to be an integration of all these topics that we'll be sharing with you. The emergence of COVID-19, better known as the coronavirus, in the late months of 2019 has caused significant disruptions to millions of students across nations, as schools were forcibly closed to safety reasons. Given the abruptness of the situation and the risk involving the students, teachers, and school staff, the education system has immediately shifted to remote and blended learning. Remote learning is described as an education method in which students and teachers utilize computers and other digital technologies in their respective households for recreating the classroom environment and the teaching learning processes. As the country is approaching herd immunity and declining cases of infections, we are now approaching the use of blended learning. Defined by DepEd, blended learning refers to face-to-face with any or mix of online distance learning, modular distance learning, and TV radio-based instruction. Today, we will discuss and examine the challenges of remote learning and how ready we are for the blended learning. I, together with Dr. Emily, Dr. Emily, will make an effort to explore and make sense of these topics. So, first, can you tell us how the last semester was for you, Dr. Evely? Yes, thank you, Dr. Monica. So I found it uh, still a bit challenging because I was juggling different responsibilities while handling several classes. 
And uh, as we all know, every semester, it's a different set of students, which requires us to make certain adjustments. So I still found it uh, a bit challenging, although it was very much fun and productive as well. But how about you, Dr. Evelyn? Just like Dr. Evelyn, you know, the experience I had last semester was still difficult, but more adjusted. No? Kasi sabi nga natin, eh, medyo gamay na ng konti. And last semester, I was already more confident navigating our LMS, which is Canvas. Hindi na ako natatakot. Hindi na ako masyadong nararattle. I was also more comfortable recording my lectures. Nung previous semesters, it took me two to three days to prepare for a 20-minute lecture. Pero ngayon, less stress na siya. Wala nang editing, record, download, then share. Ganun na. So, lesser pressure. Mm, lesser pressure na kasi din, naituro ko na yung ibang mga courses ko dati. So, I already have my resources available. So, a lot better compared to the previous semesters. Yeah, and you know, given your experiences preparing for this semester, and how was it in the process of your preparation, Dr. Emily? Yes, of course, as I earlier mentioned, medyo mas komportable na ako. However, it doesn't mean that I should stop you know, curating my materials. Now, based on the feedback that I got from my students last uh, semester, there are some articles or journal articles, for example, that uh, uh, needs to be changed, no? And then, yun, I also improved on my PowerPoint presentations because I realized ang tsaka-tsaka pala. <laughs> it's too text-heavy, no? At tsaka, syempre, medyo nilagyan ko na rin ng konting branding. No? Branding ng college namin and my own touch no, in my presentations because I discovered that it's really more practical using pre-recorded lectures kasi in terms of storage and in terms of its practical use in the future, mas madali mo na siyang ano eh, ma-recycle kumbaga. So that's how I prepared for the semester. I noticed also you shifted to Canva, no? Kaya may colors, ganda ng graphics. Can you tell us more about that? Did you enroll in any program or you learned it in the process? Yes, yeah. yung Canva, which I use for my PowerPoint presentations, uh, inaral ko lang yon on my own. And I really enjoy doing it. No? So, lagi ko nga sinasabi na hindi ako inaantok kapag yun ang ginagawa ko. <laughs> Kasi enjoy siyang gamitin. It's really user-friendly. So minsan ang ginagawa ko, I make my PowerPoint sa Canva, pero minsan nililipat ko rin siya sa PowerPoint mismo. Sa akin, mas madaling gawin yun. Mm. So, yun nga, no? so, we try to learn new techniques, no? particularly to improve no? our delivery of learning. How about you, uh, Dr. Evely? How was your preparation? Yeah, like Dr. Emily, I had to, of course, revisit my course materials okay? and uh, also reflect on the course pack that I had prepared previously. So, yun, kailangan kong aralin ulit and see, uh, learn from my experience and see how I can make improvements on my course pack and also on my teaching strategies and uh, methodologies. Kasi, you know nga, uh, we learn from our experiences. So, yung akala natin ay okay na. Meron pa palang igaganda pa, di ba? And so, after revisiting my course pack, my my materials, my teaching materials, I had to make adjustments okay, on my course pack and also on my requirements. <laughs> Kasi na-realize ko na, akala ko noon na-simplify ko na, akala ko visible na yung mga naisip kong mga requirements that would, of course, help achieve the learning objectives of my course. But then, after much reflection, I realized that uh, yun, it's necessary pa rin pala okay, to make certain adjustments Kasi given the, ano, no, the situation of our students, since we're still in the midst of a global health crisis. Napakaganda niyan, ano, lalo na at this point na they're very much open to students' feedback and peer feedback in terms of how we would be able to improve our course materials, our course guides and activity guides and the course pack. Yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing ano, talaga, learning process din, di ba, as teacher. As we, every semester talaga ay, yun, nag-aaral at nag-aaral din tayo, okay, on how we can improve 
how we handle, facilitate our classes. Yeah, so that's the reason why we really collect no, all this feedback from our students so that we can improve our delivery. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So in terms of that, no, meron tayo siyempre in employee mga strategies so that you'll be able to keep up with the technological demands of remote learning. So, Dr. Evelyn, can you continue with this? How were you able to come up with or, you know, face this uh, technological demands, knowing naman that we are actually uh, dealing with students who are really tech-savvy na talaga? Oo, kailangan makikisabayan. <laughs> Oo, oh, di ba? Pero syempre, I know naman, di ba, techie ka talaga. So, how was it? Hindi naman masyado techie, but uh, I'm, I'm really trying. So, uh, yeah, I had to be updated on the latest technology and the uh, apl- applications. Kailangan ko talagang matuto rin. Learn from the students. I remember we even had a tutorial session with one of our students no, on how to use uh, certain applications na available online. And so, ayun, we, we have to keep on learning. And then also, after almost a decade, I was forced to buy a new laptop and a new PC. So, kailangan din talagang mag-invest. Oh. <laughs> so, even now, yung, pati yung mga bulsa natin, affected talaga <laughs> nitong pandemic at itong, ano, no, yung ating remote learning setup. And so, yun, after a decade, so talagang, okay, so finally, pinag-retire ko na yung aking very reliable na laptop. And then, uh, at the same time, I also needed to learn more about blended learning. Since doon na rin naman tayo ano, papunta, di ba? So I needed to learn more about that, read about it, and learn ways to facilitate it effectively in my classes given my limited resources and technological know-how. So really talagang investment is very important, no? Uh, oh. At saka hindi, resourcefulness. Just in case, no, wala ka talagang... Yes, kasi hindi naman lahat may budget, di ba? At tayo, as, uh, as teachers, limited din naman talaga yung kaya nating ma-spend on yung mga upgrades no sa ating mga computer, di ba, yung mga equipment na meron tayo. And so, yes, I agree na resourcefulness, creativity, very important din yung mga yun. Mm-hmm. So, ikaw naman, uh, Dr. Emily, in your case, no, and any strategies you would like to share na ginawa niyo so that you would be always, you know, up to date no when it comes to this technology that we are facing. Actually, uh, well, I agree din no, with Dr. Evelyn na medyo mahal talaga. You really have to invest. Pero sa akin, it's all worth it. Because, di ba, sa education, sinasabi natin, no, we have to make the classroom environment conducive to learning. And I believe it's my responsibility as a teacher to make the Zoom classroom as conducive as possible to learning. So, yun, una-una, nag-upgrade din kami ng internet sa bahay kasi ang dami namin gumagamit. No? So, kailangan medyo mas mabilis. Pangalawa, I invested then on my laptop. No? Salamat sa UP. <laughs> Tsaka, <laughs> nakakailang sira na rin ako ng ring lights, ng microphones. No? Kasi kailangan mag-upgrade din. Kasi nung bagong ano yung, yung work from home natin, di ba yung online learning natin, na dami mga lumalabas na eto magandang microphone, magandang ilaw, ganyan. Pero kailangan din talagang mag-upgrade. And secondly, siguro aside from the god gadgets, I had to upgrade in terms of integrating technology into the content, into my methodology, and into my delivery of the subject matter. Kasi iba talaga yung integration ng technology when it's face-to-face. Iba din yung integration ng technology when it's online. It's really more challenging. So, yun. Talagang continuous dapat yung ano, upgrading natin in terms of the technological skill at the same time integrating technology into the content and strategies of our subject matter. Oo nga Dr. Emily no lalo na yung pagdating sa integration na yan ano and mm-hmm. when I was also forced to this remote learning no para sa really new turf kumbaga it's not really my turf masanay talaga ako sa in person and uh, to imitate that in person environment to a remote 
type was really uh, something very new. And I believe also the students were equally challenged. And um, kaya nga ang dami kong bloopers, no? When I was starting with this, minsan naiiwan ko naka-on yung, yung aking audio, yung mic ko, and then I chat, mga ganyan-ganyan. Tapos minsan man, I was not aware na yung palang camera ko nasa ibang angulo, yung mga ganyan ba? And then yung mga, mga estudyante ko, mas updated sila sa mga apps, yung mga pair deck, yung mga whiteboard, mga ganyang bagay. It's really something that you have to catch up ba, and learn. Kung baga sila, sanay na sanay na, tayo talagang double time, triple time for us to be at par with their skills in terms of technology. Kaya nga, ngayon, siyempre, mas enjoy na. Pero meron pa rin mga talagang uh, mga bago no, na you need really to integrate in your in your content and in your delivery. Kaya nga, no, ito, darating na tayo sa nalalapit na ang tinatawag natin face-to-face classes. So, what are your preparations kung sakasakali nga in the near, very near future or in the near future, how are you, what strategies or what can you, what have you been doing no, in this type of approach? I think I can start, no? So, uh, first, we have to make sure that the, the learning environment is ready for blended learning. And uh, when we talk about uh, the learning environment, this also includes the students, okay, and the teachers. Diba? Hindi lang to yung mga classrooms natin and also the equipment that we have. Now, um, yeah, actually, UPLD is already gearing for limited face-to-face classes for some uh, courses this uh, semester. And we are already preparing the roadmap for limited uh, face-to-face classes for all, hopefully by next uh, academic year. So um, my experience being part of the committee on uh, the preparation for limited face-to-face classes, so I can say that it really takes a lot of planning and uh, coordination among different uh, units and offices in the university to make this work. So we really have to make sure that the campus and uh, the UPLD community okay, as a whole are ready for limited face-to-face classes, and uh, which, of course, entails blended learning. So in terms of classrooms, um, we'll be retrofitting our classrooms and uh, equipping them with reliable internet connection and uh, the necessary equipment. So IGRD, for instance, will be investing on a smart classroom for uh, in preparation for our limited face-to-face okay, in the very near future. Wow, so excited no, how UPLV will look like no, when the face-to-face na. Uh, I'm sure marami tayong mga estudyante really wanted to go back to our campus. Oo, miss na miss na nila ang campus natin. <laughs> Oo, di ba tayo, we are just ano, using it as our virtual background. Pero talagang, <laughs> you know, it's really different when you are there, situated in a very beautiful environment, no? So, and uh, syempre, no, uh, we are really anticipating mga protocols that we need to follow so that uh, we do not put our students and the staff at risk. Yes, that is true. So to our students, abang lang kayo. We're we're getting ready for you. <laughs> and then, uh, face to face, limited face to face classes. Correct. No po, malapit na malapit na. Uh, how about you, Dr. Emily? In your case, in UP Manila, majority actually have implemented limited face to face, especially in the white colleges. We call them the white colleges who have laboratories or who are uh, into laboratory classes. So, syempre, in preparation no, for that, nagkaroon din ng retrofitting ng mga classrooms, ng mga laboratories, and they have to make sure that they comply with the requirements and the protocols of IAPF and, of course, the CHED. And we also have ongoing faculty development programs or activities aimed at retooling the faculty in the use of appropriate platforms of course, to make teaching and learning engaging and interactive. And in our case, NTTC, we involve our students in the retooling. We have learning sessions with our students, with our faculty members, and some students have the expertise as speakers, like, for example, how to prepare online assessments, ano pa, how to make your uh, PowerPoint more engaging, how to record, etc., etc. No? So, may mga learning sessions kami na ganon. And then, since yun nga, parang uh, 
limited face-to-face -face classes will be here. It's uh, it's something that we really have to embrace. No? So in our college, we have started uh, installing high-end uh, internet connections so that we can teach in the classroom while other students perhaps can attend or can participate online. So ito yung sinasabi namin na uh, high flex or high, uh, hybrid flexible learning. No? Since most of our students all pala, not most, no? All our students are health professionals. Of course, they are busy in the hospitals and in their clinics, so some of them cannot come to the classroom. And most of our students are outside Metro Manila, actually, no? from north to south. And they grab the opportunity to enroll in the master's and the uh, doctorate program because it's online. So we really have to cater and to address to the needs of both our NCR-based students and those outside of NCR. So, yun yung ini-imagine namin ngayon na parang si professor nagtuturo sa classroom, may mga ilan siyang estudyante yung nakaupo while yung camera naka-online, kita kami, and then they participate at the same time. So, I think this is going to be the challenge now of uh, professors like us. How do we manage both the online and the offline classes? So, we really have to prepare ourselves. So, ito yung mga bagay na kailangan natin paghandaan. So, retooling our faculty members. That's yeah. right. It's very important. It's very critical. Yeah. So, and you know, uh, it's been two years. Maybe uh, you would like to share, what have you learned so far? What are the lessons learned handling uh, classes in this kind of setup, remote and then blended. So, what have you learned in this very interesting experience? Ako, ano, ang dami. Number one, I learned to be more creative. As I mentioned earlier, na in terms of preparing my class, kung ano-anong pakulo ang ginagawa ko, para lang ma-engage yung mga estudyante ko kahit sa pre-recorded lectures. And I'm happy that they appreciate the efforts that I make no? For them, sabi nila, sabi ng mga estudyante ko, very helpful daw yung, yun nga, yung ginagawa kong mga innovation. And then, I really pushed myself to explore ways by which classes, kahit na on Zoom lang, become more engaging and reflective at the same time. I learned to be more open and compassionate and considerate. Sabi nga ni Dr. Evely kanina, kala natin dati, okay lahat ng mga activities na nilagay natin. Pero given the situation of our students, especially for us, because they are surgeons, they are doctors, they are, you know, frontliners sila eh. So, hindi pwedeng yung outputs noon na in-expect ko ay the same pa rin. So, I also learned to design assessment tools who are more formative in nature rather than summative. Kasi I think mm -hmm. yun yung mas nakakatulong sa kanila. I learned to marry condo, sabi nga nila. I learned to marry condo my curriculum. I focused on the most essential competencies and learning no? na kailangan lang nilang matutunan. So yun. Of course, I also learned to, to prepare myself, not only yung presentations ko and all, but myself, physically, emotionally, kasi I don't get to touch them anymore. So, dapat pagharap mo sa camera, pag synchronous session, eh, maganda ka. No? I mean, you, 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 you exude no, that positivity para naman mahawaan yung mga estudyante mo. Kasi nga, malulungkot sila eh. No? Minsan kasi sinasabi ng mga estudyante ko, ma'am, kakatapos ko lang mag-intubate. Ma'am, kamamatay lang ng pasyente ko. Ma'am, ganyan-ganyan. So, parang, alam mo yun, so I really had to prepare myself. And I learned from my students. Oo, no? Parang ikaw ang naging buffer din, ano, at the same time. So, talagang kailangan talaga ng tatag na loob. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What about you, Dr. Evely? Like Dr. Emily, I've learned a lot these past semesters. So for one, ayun na nga, I've become more, I think I've become more flexible, more adaptive. Kasi nga, you have to ano, consider the times. You have to consider the situation of your students. Now, si Dr. Emily, most of her students are ano, diba, health professionals. Kami, ako naman, in my case, mga estudyante ko, mga teachers, mga educators who are also very much ano, stressed out the situation kasi 
sila din, they're dealing with uh, challenges in the classroom. So, itong mga teachers na to, pagod din, hirap din, nagahabol ng mga requirements and all that. Kasi, sila mismo, they're very much uh, challenged by the situation. So, you really have to be more empathetic. You have to be more considerate, compassionate. And so I believe I've become more adaptive as a as a teacher, as an educator. I've become more flexible. Okay? And then, yeah, it's important, I think, also to, ano eh, ako, isa sa mga learnings ko, uh, the past semesters, we have to, ano eh, to leave our comfort zones. Kasi tayo may mga nakasanayan na, di ba? Na parang, ito yung, I, I think this is the best way that I can handle the class. But this is a different scenario, itong, pinagdadaanan natin ngayon. And so, we really have to make certain adjustments. We have to leave our comfort zones, try new things. And then, very important, we cannot do it alone. Eh. So, very important is to collaborate. Make the most of the opportunities and the possibilities. Kasi, um, yeah, for example, in my experience, I said, we are in a naman, eh, remote learning setup. So, we we facilitate our synchronous sessions diba, online. So, uh, via Zoom. And so, this gave us the opportunity to collaborate with other professors. So, in fact, I even had one uh, learning session with Dr. Emily and her class. And I think that was a very uh, no, interesting learning event because we were able to put together these different students with from different backgrounds. And so, the sharing of experiences very relevant. And, even, and I was able to invite also educator friends from abroad to join our class and even their students. So, nakakatawa, no, yung mga ganitong classing opportunities. So, although medyo restricted tayo, hindi tayo makalabas ng, ano, ng Pilipinas, hindi tayo makapag-field trip sa kung saan natin uh, gusto, hindi natin mabigay yung exposure trip sa ating mga sudyate. But there are other possibilities and opportunities that we can embrace. We should make the most of these possibilities. So, very important would be collaboration, okay, collaborating with other educators and then creating, you know, mga learning event situations, okay, wherein we can learn from, you know, from one another even if we are restricted <laughs> in our homes, di ba? Naka, ano tayo, di tayo pwede lumabas at times, di ba? And so, yun, so I think, yes, let's, um, let's leave our comfort zones, uh, try new things and explore Okay, other opportunities and possibilities okay, in learning. Wow, uh, that is really encouraging mga uh, shinier din yung uh, learning experiences and things that other educators would be able to learn from. And uh, yeah, same thing, no? Uh, learning from mistakes uh, is also one thing that we need to accommodate, no? Hindi tayo perfect sa ganitong klaseng uh, imperfect situations but uh, we are striving uh, uh, within our own uh, capacities to make things better or for our students, no? So, in other words, no, important rin siguro, naisip ko yung being a mental health advocate. It's also important yung self-care, being self-compassionate. I always uh, include this and integrate this in my lessons. The importance of being mindful, being aware of the present moment, and of course, being also kind to oneself and accepting our limitations. Kasi pag al- alam natin yung ating kakayanan, at ang ating pwede natin i-contribute more, nagiging mas effective tayo as educators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no? So, this has been a very engaging and enriching discussion. I agree. And in conclusion, ano, the, the pandemic has not only affected our country socially and economically, but also impacted a very important sector of our development, which is education. And it has been two years that instructions and learning have been delivered remotely through online and modular classes. The question is, what happens after the pandemic? We can only guess or hope for a gradual shift to -to face-to-face, armed with the better strategies in managing classes with flexibility and appropriate technology. So thank you once again. Until our next episode of Let's Talk!